Thanks for watching another quick tip video from Go Engineer. My name is Bruce Schaller, and this quick tip video is going to be on adding a part to SolidWorks' bill of material that you don't necessarily want to model. That could be parts like glue, epoxy, lube, or even stickers. So adding that to the bill of materials as a part that you want to keep associative to the SolidWorks model. In addition to that, I'm going to cover some tips and tricks for working with bills of materials inside of SolidWorks. So to begin with, let's go ahead and start with a drawing that doesn't have a bill of materials already on it. And let's go through inserting a bill of materials into the drawing. Now, when we do this, we can go ahead and choose the bill of material that we want to use. It's better to customize and make one that has your own setup in it. But for this demonstration, I'm using the bomb standard template that comes in the standard load point, load point area inside of SolidWorks. So from there, I do like to set my bomb to have all uppercase. And you can come back to this by clicking on the bomb later if you didn't set all uppercase to begin with. But that'll go ahead and insert the bomb in. I'm not using an anchor point, so I can just put that anywhere from now because I want to go in and focus on some of the capabilities that this table has to offer that a lot of people don't find without really poking around on it. So to begin with, we can reorder any of these. So if I want the hydraulics control assembly to become before the yoke assembly, I can simply grab this column and drag and drop it up above, and it'll reorder these. And I'd suggest if you want to reorder them nicely before you put the balloons on, that might be a better order than putting the balloons on and doing it afterwards. I'll show a little bit of both. Another little item that I like to show is we have this pullout menu. That pullout menu allows a little icon to show up of each part or subassembly within the assembly. So it's kind of nice to navigate, especially if you're doing some reordering functions. But from here, I'll just go in and start using the standard bill of materials and show you how to go in and add a blank part. Now to begin with, let me go in and do some auto ballooning. I like using the auto ballooning to balloon. And I will go through some of the settings on here and, and how to work with this data quickly. So first off over here, you can see that there's a lock on for do not change item numbers. I generally go ahead and unlock that. And I'll generally want to do this where I do order sequentially. Or what I like the most is following the assembly order, kind of like how the assembly got put together, particularly if it was put together in the order that it's virtualized in the world. So from here, if I went in and looked at doing order sequentially, I can go in and, and tell it it's starting one, two, three, and going all the way around right now, four, five, six. If I really wanted to change that, I could say select first item and make this my first item. And then it's going to go all the way around doing the same thing, making up here my last item. So what I like to do the most on my assemblies is follow the assembly order. That makes for reordering them and cleaning them up as you go on a little easier. So let's go in and do that. From here, I'll just go ahead and check out of the auto ballooning capabilities. But I want to go in and do some managing on my balloons. So these magnet lines really help you clean this up. Since I'm following an assembly order here, I can go ahead and clean these up and move these along so they don't overlap. And I can get these to look pretty nice in here, stretching these along and moving these to kind of nudge it in and get it perfect. And on some of these, if you don't like where the arrow is pointing to, you can always click on the end of the arrow, point it to one of the other items. It'll still keep the item tag on there, and you can move on to the next. So there are ways to kind of work with this, cleaning it up, spreading it out, using these magnetic lines. You could even lock them into 60 degrees and such if you 
wanted to use some of your old 30 degree, 60 degree standards in there. So now we're getting to the real part of the video, which is adding a blank part or a placeholder part for your bomb and your bill of materials. It's pretty easy to do. All we really need to do is go over into the bill of materials, right click and say insert new part. What this is going to do is it's going to ask me what template that I want to use. I'll just use my standard part inch template. It's only got a couple properties already embedded into it. And then it's asking me for a file name. I might want to make this like my warning sticker. And I'll add a description. Matter of fact, the file name is the part number in my bill of material. So I'll use a number for my part and then I'll add the description for my warning sticker. And I think if I've used uppercase, it doesn't matter if I've got lowercase here, it'll all make it uppercase when it gets into the assembly. Now what it's asking me to do is pick a location and it really wants like a flat plane location in order to locate the in-place mate for this part. I really don't have for one of these stickers a flat location. So I'm just going to pick any flat plane right now because it really isn't going to matter unless you model part of the part. So with that, that's all I really needed to do. And you can see what it's done is it's gone into SolidWorks is top down creating a part mode. You can tell because I'm editing the part inside the assembly. If I pulled down my tree, it would show you that part number that I've got in here. And that's the part that it's now added as a blank placeholder part inside the assembly. So if I go back in to my tree now, you can see I've got the warning sticker in capitals, and it's now item number 20. Now, the problem with it being a part that hasn't been modeled, and it's a blank part, you will not be able to just show your auto ballooning and go ahead and see the 20 get in here. I just want to clean that up a little bit. So what you have to do in order to tag this is you really have to go in there and just put it with a text balloon that you're going to use to add a new balloon from scratch. So I can go ahead and point that to wherever I want. And then when I'm adding the balloon, rather than using the item number for the balloon extension, we need to go in there and put the text. And we can type in whatever the text is that we need to make it. And, oh, sorry, I didn't do that when I was on the balloon. So I need to go in there and set it to the right text number. And there, and now, this balloon could be dropped on to my magnet line and made visible for adding a new part to a bill of materials inside of SolidWorks. Now, if you need to export this information out, you can always right click into the bill of materials and say save as and save this as an Excel file, comma delimited or text file. But at this point in time, you literally have this part sitting inside your SolidWorks assembly. If you wanted to open up the blank part and add any more properties to it, you could do that. You can see where it's put my description for the properties or anything configuration specific you can use. So that's adding a blank part or a new part from scratch inside of SolidWorks bill of materials. It works the exact same way if I was doing this in an assembly rather than a drawing, if I went in and added the bill of materials through the add insert table bill of materials inside of the assembly, it works the exact same way as it does in the drawing without using the auto ballooning. There's no auto ballooning capability inside the assembly. So there you have it, adding blank parts for placeholders inside of SolidWorks's bomb capability. Thanks for watching another quick tip video from Go Engineer.